team you guys played last season, although it was a scrimmage. Is there anything you remember about that game or about that team? Yeah, uh, what I remember, and you can uh, listen to these two too, they were both there, is that they are a athletic, well-coached team. Um, you know, and preseason games are different. I'm sure they were trying some things out. We were fresh and new on the field. Uh, but I remember it being a fun matchup. We came out on the better end of it, but um, they've had a terrific season, and they're going to be a formidable opponent for sure. Them beating Florida, does that kind of speak to the, the how fragile these seasons can be where just one game, a few things go wrong, and a seed that could come in and win on your home floor, obviously you're over yeah. There now, but I mean, all you have all you have to look at is our game against Seattle U. <laughs> that game could have gone either way. You know, there were points in that game where I feel like we got very fortunate um, to keep them out of the back of our net and get a shutout. And then um, to win that game was huge. Soccer is a game on the day. Anything can happen. It doesn't matter what your number in front or your record is or who's, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, and USF has not beaten Florida, I don't think, either ever or in a long time. Um, and they've got a kid on their team that scored 20 goals this season. She scored 20 last year, so they're they're going to be a challenge for us. Uh, for Amira, was there anything you learned about postseason play in that first game that you feel like is really going to prepare you for this next round? Don't be nervous. I think playing in my first postseason game, I went in um, too nervous, and it kind of overshadowed on what I needed to do and what my role needed to be. So I think just treat it as like – any other game, don't put too much into it, but it's still, I need to work my hardest instead of being like, oh no, I've never played in it again, so. Did you feel like there's any players on the field that just felt like they were built for the postseason and are really going to be someone that you and the rest of the team can look at as a leader going into this next matchup? Um, everyone. I mean, everyone does their role. Everyone plays their hardest. Um, we have everyone that does their own role and does their own role well. So I don't think it's anyone in particular, but I think us as a collective team. Is that uh, something where you see maybe it's almost easier to get ready for the second game once you just get that first one, first postseason experience under your belt? Um, yeah, definitely. That one, I know I had a lot of nerves, and it was a frantic game. We were trying to get goals and trying to defend well, but now that we've really played in that first game, gotten all of our nerves out, that really helps us going into this next game. It's just another game we need to focus on what we need to do in our role on and off the field and prepare for Friday. This is a team that's been very successful on the road, especially against top-ranked teams. Do you, what do you think that says about this team's ability to go on to go on the road and get pick up big wins? I think this team this year is a different monster. We've really learned who we are, we've played to our strengths and um, against any opponent we've played, not just the ranked teams and the harder teams, but we've showed that every game we can come out and play the way we play and it's going to be a good game and a good team. So, Going into that last game, no one on the team had played in a postseason game. Did it feel like with all the youth on this team, did it feel like everyone was kind of on the same level playing field experience-wise going into that and moving forward collectively? Um, I think that kind of helped us in a way because we weren't, I mean, we were nervous. It was our first tournament game, but we, you know, that all flew out the window once you go onto the field. It's just another game. We have really great leaders on the team and really great seniors who want to keep playing and that really pushes us to you know play for the people who it might be their last game so it's been a few weeks since you guys have gotten a goal in the first half how big especially when you're going on the road is it going to be to start off out of the gate strong yeah i mean i think we create pretty early in first halves and sometimes we just don't convert getting one of those would certainly take the pressure off us but one of the things that this team in particular has been impressive to us as coaches has been the fact that we've only been down at halftime twice, I think, three maybe, three times? Twice. Um, once against Stanford and against, not even Texas, Utah. and Utah. We're the only two games in this entire, you know, so far 20-game season that we've been down. And 
Um, that means that collectively we defend well, we keep ourselves in games, and we always give ourselves a chance in the second half. Um, I, I, you know, if I could just live with that statistic as a coach, I don't think it's a bad one. Um, and so we're always going to give ourselves a chance. I've really enjoyed our energy in the second half. Would we love to put away early goals on those chances? 100%. But I've been very impressed with their collective um, composure to be tied at half and, and be able to come into second halves and, and really turn it up a notch. And I, I thought you saw that against CLU. I think a lot of the nerves went out. Um, out in the second half, I thought we started to play more. We pressed them a little bit more. They were still dangerous, and we had to defend well. But at the same time, I thought we had the better play. We had more of the ball and created more quality chances and got one in the end. Um, so, you know, we're always looking to get on top of teams early if we can. If we don't, I'm pleased with the fact that we know, and I think our team feels like if, as long as we're in it, we have a chance to win the game. And I, I've been impressed by that. Kind of on that same topic, eight of the last nine games has come down to just a one goal difference. Do yeah. so you think that's kind of prepared the team for facing, not only facing adversity, but going into these postseason games where really it could be a one goal difference and goals are really hard to come by in the postseason? Yeah, and, and JC and Amir have both alluded to it. You know, the thing about these guys is that I feel like they've been in pressure situations and even though they were collectively as a team a little bit nervous and the big crowd and, and you know, one and done, all of that stuff that adds up, I still think even though they were nervous, they handled it well. And I think the tight games, the close games, um, have prepared them for that. You know, would we like them to be blowouts? Sure, just to be able to relax a little bit. But um, in the NCAA tournament, you can't bank on that happening. Not with the players, you know, not with the teams that we're and the opponents that we are going to face. So the fact that we have that experience in this group, that they know how to overcome in the tight games, um, speaks to how much this group has matured. Um, not just you know, in pressure moments, but overall in their preparation and understanding what that feels like in a game. It's, um, it's comforting to know that they know how, what to do in those situations, and we always feel like we have a chance, which is great. I guess this is a question for everyone up there, but I guess more so the players, but going into Florida, where it's going to be higher than it is here, but not sweltering like you guys play in Texas, <laughs> yeah. do you almost prefer that type of weather more than Seattle, where it's cold and rainy, like we saw in this last game? Um, I mean... I know everyone wants to play in like a chiller type environment, but um, you can't control your controllables. I think that's just the biggest thing. It's you can't control where you play, you can't control where you are, so you can't really put that into um, what's going to happen. You have to just bank on your team and trust that everyone's going to do their part. Um, I personally love the Seattle weather, <laughs> playing in the cold and rain. That's my favorite, but. Yeah, exactly. Coming from a Californian. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, exactly what Amira said. You can't control the weather. You can only control how you play on the day, and that's what we're going to try to do best we can. Yeah, and as coaches, you know, we've been in Southern California. It wasn't exactly cold in Northern California <laughs> when we played Texas. Um, we came out on a Sunday after having played Friday at Texas and went and played TCU in the heat of the day. And, and part of that's on us as coaches, too, to manage the rotation of the players, to manage their loads. And, um, you know, they know – Whatever the temperature is, they're to go out and play at 100% max as long and hard as they can, and then we've got someone that can come in behind them. And I think that's been a strength of this team as well, is that our depth is much better than it's been in the past. And we have a lot of interchangeable parts, and um, it's given them the confidence to go in and just do what they need to do as long as they can do it. And they know they can um, you know, come off and take a rest while somebody comes in and lifts the game and, and maintains the level for us. So you know, that's on us as a staff to control too. But, you know, I'm happy it's probably not going to be in the hundreds at 2 o'clock on Friday. <laughs> it's just not preferable to anybody, I don't think. But I think we'll be all right. You have late morning training most of the time, so 1 o'clock kick should be no big deal. No, it'll be like 11 o'clock for us, our time there. We're going tomorrow, so we've got a day to kind of get used to things and have one more training down there, and then we'll have regular pregame practice on Thursday, and they play <clears throat> then play Friday at 2 Eastern time. So, yeah, I think for – getting back after it again after playing Saturdays. Like, I, I, we're in the mode in the season, and I, these guys may agree or not agree, but training is, like, just sharpening, and, and it's recovery, and it's rest, and it's just it's, – it's usually not much anymore. It's just making sure that we're, we're staying fresh and paying attention to details. But I think these guys are all about, let's just get to the next game. <laughs> like, let's hurry up and play again. It's, yeah. you know, you just, you just want to get to the games, and, that, and that's the fun part of it. And just making sure you're recovering and doing the right things in between so you're fresh and 100% on game day. Um, and we want to work as hard as we can to earn ourselves two on the weekend, and we'll go from there. Are set pieces and the little nuances more magnified this time of year? Set pieces, I think, are always magnified. Set pieces in 
well, that would include penalty kicks if you have to come down to that or if you earn one in the game. Um, and, and that's something still we're looking at. I think we've created enough to be even more dangerous on set pieces, and we might add some new wrinkles that maybe other teams haven't seen on video because they can scout and watch you, and I'm sure other teams are doing the same thing. But uh, soccer is a game, too, where your players on the field, they have to read situations and adjust to them in, in the moment. You know, There's a lot of things that can't be coached. If a team throws something at you, you just have to figure it out. And um, So those are details that we talk about, and we will we'll go over some more before Friday for sure.